Hello, my name is Melissa Lockwood. Um, now I'm going to be talking about fashion industry pattern area waste, and that's mass production waste. And um, what goes into the landfills is the areas outside of the standard pattern areas. And um, I'll use this visual. Um, you can see the standard pattern area pieces in white. And the parts outside in yellow are what gets thrown away. And um, so what this, what I'm gonna be talking about is how those pieces can stay in use and become additional garments. Um, so, um, well, one thing I wanna describe is that um, these, all these things on here are cut out in multiples. And so when a designer has a factory manufacture their clothing, they lay out stacks and stacks, you know, like one, two, three, like up to like 50, 100, 1,000 pieces, but they're done, let's say 100 at a time. And so you get 100 short fronts, you get 100 under the sleeve, because this is a pattern for a jacket and a pair of shorts. So you get 100 of each of these white pieces, but you also get 100 of each of these yellow pieces. And so um, when I was, uh, you know, a friend of mine once told me like, I see a pile of fabric on the ground, go check it out. When I went to see what she had seen, I didn't see a small pile. I saw dumpsters full of, of these yellow pieces still in stacks, like intact. And so let's say I, well, I actually have a photo of the first dress I made that with fabric I found that way. Um, so I found stacks of a uh, hundred of these and it took about 14 of these to make this dress. Um, so I had, um, you know, enough to make like a lot more dresses. I, I'm, I'm not doing math in my head right now for some reason. Um, but okay, so then there's also here's another example. I found this on the same day. These were my turnkey pieces. I just intuitively thought, huh, this is such beautiful fabric. This is like beautiful cotton fabric, stretchy jersey, and it was um this shape. And so I um I had a basket with me, like a pull basket. So I just bundled up a bunch of those black and white pieces and um a bunch of those other red pieces. And I had found a a dress form, like a mannequin, but the kind for making clothes in the street some time before. And so I took it to my studio and I thought, huh, how many of these will it take to go around this dress form? And I held them up and I pinned it, pinned it, pinned it. And I thought, wow, it's instantly a dress. So these literally, I just saw, uh, took like, you can see on here between the jacket front and the underside of the jacket sleeve, that exact shape is there. Um, and so, you know how common it is for jackets to be made? So it's very common that fashion designers for the last like many, many years have thrown away this exact dress millions of times. And it's all rotting in the landfills causing pollution. So, um, what my project does is takes and you know like finds logical areas to cut these so let's say um this piece is one long piece but in order for me to have a hundred of this piece i just cut it there and i can do this all um pre-planned in AutoCAD when I lay out this stuff, I can start to determine, oh, this can be a skirt part. And I'll show you this in life size um, scale. 
this is that piece um blown up. Actually, it's life size because I, I I actually designed that jacket and the pair of shorts. So this was going to be my remnant waist, but um, lo and behold, this is the the skirt that it made, and it's the exact same size as the jacket and the um the shorts. Weirdly enough, um. I could make a, as not, I can't make a hundred, hundred skirts and a hundred jackets, but I can make like 50 skirts and a hundred jackets and things. But, um, so yeah, so how I do it is I take those shapes and, um, I apply, um, geometry as far as a really simple technique called radial projection. And so let's say um, I take this shape or any shape that's narrower and gets wider because the human body has like, like the hips, the waist is narrower and the um, hips get wider usually or often. And um, same for the shoulders and the waist. It can be any variance actually. You just uh, add or subtract the amount of pieces. But so I just um, count out the, the number, you know, like the width of this part and how many of that I need to make the cylinder that I want to make. And so for me, this was four. And let's say I wanted to make, you know, a 20 inch cylinder, cil cylinder I need five pieces. So that would just be five of those. And you just put the narrow end up and you sew along these edges. And for that skirt that I just showed you, I hope it was viewable. It's like black, but, and um, shiny and it didn't have anything filling it up, but uh, it ends up like this, basically. You can see there's a waist area and then the part that flares out. And so let's say with this piece, I did the same thing. I sewed as many as it took along this vertical edge to make a cylinder. And um, I didn't have to cut open this part or these parts. I just didn't um, sew them together. I left it open. And um, so in a factory, it'd be really easy for people to sew this technique because they, they're not used to cutting in the middle of um, sewing, where that's part of the reason why manufacturing is um, has a lot of waste because they don't want to have the sewers suddenly cutting a head open or arm openings and sewing around that. Uh, so what else do I have here? But actually, you know, that's as easy as it is. You just take this and analyze these shapes. For me, for me that intuitively that looks like a half, like a quarter of, like half of a front of a dress or four of those will go together to make a dress. What do you think? It made a dress. I didn't have to change the shape. Um, this segment, it made a dress. All of these, when you just take the number that you need to create the shape of this size of cylinder, and if it's long, it can be a, a smock or a dress. If it's short, it can be a skirt or a kilt. Like it can be, you know, worn by anyone who wants to have something unique. But uh, I've literally discovered that like 12 or more years ago and um, I started opening um, art exhibit or art pop-ups that were about, I'm going to be uh, selling clothing made with local fashion designers waste. And um, so now if you look on my website, which is um, iqtest-nyc.com, you can see previous collections I've made and shown. Uh, with fabrics that actual mass producing 
fashion designers have thrown away. Um, I had a collection that was shown in uh, Vogue UK that was strictly made with um, fashion industry salvaged fabrics that were designer waste, studio waste pieces. Um, but it's that easy. You just, the designers just need to look at that. And, um, oh, I have one more reason why uh, the fashion industry is really compartmentalized. So that, like some designers just make a sketch and then someone else makes a sample from that. And then someone else does the grading to make the sizes of the garments. And then someone else sends that to uh, a, a factory where they, or then they make, then they send it to the factory and then the fabric is layered up and then it's cut out. So designer who do, made the drawing isn't seeing all the process and they don't travel to their factory and watch it get cut out. So a lot of designers, I'm thinking naively maybe, but they're not even aware of the possibility of using those remnant shapes in the design process. Um, so what I'm working for is to um, raise awareness about that this is proven. I've made so many garments with it and I've never had a failure with the um, zero waste uh, pattern making with remnants because um, they're always made in multiple and whether they're like um, these long narrow, long narrow strips that are cut off the edges, those can easily be sewn into a cylinder. This way you can make garments with their waist without thinking. And I've had, um, I, I once um, had the opportunity to pick from a dumpster at a garment manufacturing factory and take it upstairs to the sewing floor. And I asked the people to choose their own um, rate if they could sew those pieces into cylinders that were a certain size. And um, so they said, how much? And I said, okay, call me when they're done. And I thought it would be like days or weeks. And the next morning they called and said, we were able to make 140 cylinders out of that bag of fabric that you brought us. And they were all wearable. And if they weren't wide enough at the bottom, I just cut into it and added triangles, which are zero waste also. Um, so it's just that the multiples can be done with radial projection to create cylinders. And um, even if they're tiny pieces, they can be sewn together and made into, you know, cylinders by tubes or draping. But I'm trying to keep it so that factories can just design into their pattern areas and utilize what's been traditionally the waste area and keep it as simple as possible so that the cutout people who hand it over to the sewers, it just becomes garments as easy as possible. Um, um, like there's even ways like if you have that cylinder and you just leave a segment open that you can stick your arm under and your arm if you leave another one and then have like a drapey thing and you can just pin it. Um, so this is my mini explanation of how mass production waste can be used to manufacture additional garments in mass production so it doesn't go into the landfill. Yeah, if you want to see more, look at my website, which is called iqtest-nyc.com. And I also have the um, Instagram that is iqtest underscore Melissa underscore Lockwood. Okay, thank you. I hope it was understandable. Thank, thank you, you so much, Melissa. This was so fascinating, honestly, so interesting. Um, and I think that really people aren't aware. I knew that fast fashion was a problem. I knew it was bad for the environment. I knew it was bad for people's health. I knew that there were a lot of issues with it, but I didn't 
understand just quite how big the problem is. And I think that what you have done for everybody that watches this is to really illustrate that really clearly. And um, thank you so much for your time and energy. I will pop all of your links into the YouTube description of this video so that people can follow you on Instagram. They can find your website and find out more. Um, I've already had a look at your website and there is so much on there to, um, yeah, to learn from and just to be inspired by. So thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it.